I've got us starting in Varasana, which is hero's pose. So I've got one blanket down on the bottom of the, the mat or on the mat. Um, and that's for the shins and for the top of the feet. And then I've got my second blanket folded like this and I'll sit on top of my second blanket. So when you come seated, guys, you wanna just sit to where your bottom, your sitting bones is, are right at the edge of your blanket. Let me demonstrate. So before I sit, I'll come kneeling over in front of the blankets, press down through the shins, tops of the feet, really kind of bring the sacrum and the tailbone down. And then I'll bend the knees a little bit deeper. And as I sit, I wanna sit right at the edge of the blanket with the two sitting bones and the hips go right out inside of the, the uh, inner heels. So your two hips go inside of your inner heels. In other words, you're not seated on top of your heels. Your heels, your feet are out to the side and your bottom is on your prop. You'll bring your sacrum and your tailbone down and let's do this. Let's take the knees just apart for a little bit, just slightly apart. And I'll lean over one side to the other, take the hand, upper hamstring lower, but I'll rotate out, draw the inner thigh down. Do that on both sides. Rotate lower, but I'll push out, inner growing down. Good. And you guys can turn that way if you don't mind. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, you will, you can't get in trouble. No starburst for you. I don't think there's any starburst left anyway. <laughs> Very good guys. And then go ahead, after you've adjusted the buttock flesh, bring the inner knees and the inner thighs back together. Take your hands, heel of your hands to your upper legs, press down, lift your side body, spread your collarbone, bring your shoulders down. Bring your hands to your heart center. Keep your chin parallel to the mat. And we want to move the breastbone up towards the chin. Sides of the neck, back of the neck are long. As you exhale your breath, close your eyes. Begin to center yourselves here using your breath. It's ujjayi breath. So as you take your inhalation, move your inhale into the, in through your nostrils. Empty the lungs completely with your exhalation. Remember that your lungs fill up like balloons. So as you inhale, expand your inhalation. Exhale the breath evenly. I'll chant on one time. Join in or you're welcome to just listen. Oh. Exhale your breath, bow your head, bring your chin to the groove of your neck. Keep your collarbone open, tops of your shoulders down away from your ears. Bring your hands down to the tops of your legs. Center your head and as you exhale the breath, slowly open the eyes and release the hands. Very good guys. I'm gonna stay in Varasana. So get your two blocks if you need them and bring them in front of you. We're gonna move forward into Adho Mukha Varasana. So here in Adho Mukha, keep your tailbone and your sacrum drawn down towards your mat, strongly drawn down towards your mat, press through the tops of your feet and your shin bones and move your blocks out in front of you. You go very slowly or I have to go slowly. Push down into your blocks. Bring your ears in line with your upper arms. And again, tailbone and sacrum move down. So your sacrum, your tailbone moves opposite of your hands. Once you get your blocks out as far as you can, bring your fingers together. Walk your hands out. Maybe your fingertips come to the uh, front edge of your blocks. Inhale, press down into your blocks. Look out towards the top of your mat. Exhale, grip over your blocks. Make sure you're pressing your shin bones down and bring your blocks back. Great. Great, great, great. Take your arms out in front of you, palms of your hands face to, towards each other. Inhale, take your arms up. 
reach up into your fingertips. Bring your tailbone down, bring your sacrum down, bring your shin bones down. Perfect. And then exhale, release. Bring one block, one of your blocks behind you in Varasana and bring it so that it's right at your sacrum and right at your tailbone. I've got mine on the flat version like this right behind me. And I'm going to lift the side ribs, take the arms up, twist to the right, take the torso, twist to the right, bring the left hand outside of the right knee, right fingertips behind you on your block, press down, lift the spine, twist to the right. Exhale, bring your gaze back to the center and then release the twist. Perfect. Inhale, take the arms up and out, reach up. Exhale, right arm comes down outside of the left knee. Left fingertips, mind you, bend your elbow, tuck your outer left leg in, lift your spine, twist to the left. Now, as you're twisting to the left, guys, check your outer left rib cage. See if you can tuck it in towards your outer right rib cage, twist a little deeper, and then exhale, come back to the center. Perfect. Go ahead, we're gonna come out of Varasana so you can come forward on the hands and knees, or you can lean over one side, drag one foot up at a time to the mat, place the foot on the mat, and then hold behind the knee to straighten the knee. That's a safe way if you've got knee or back or anything like that. And then do the same on the opposite side. Press down through the foot, extend the knee. You can stay at the edge of that blanket or you can slide forward and come onto your mat. Let's really do a floing of the feet. So press out like you're pressing the gas pedal with the bait, that's it, uh, Megan. And then take your hands right outside of your hips and you can be on your fingertips and for a moment, really spread the backs of the knees, bring the leg bones down, press and lift your side body. Lift as high as you can. Perfect. And with your next exhalation, release. I'm gonna slide a little bit forward just so I can be in front of my blanket. And I'm gonna take my block again behind me for Dandasana. So, and I'll turn to the side so you guys can see what that looks like. So I'll bring the block right into the sacrum. I'll kind of press in to the sacrum and push down into the block to lift. Good. And you almost pretend as if you're going to lift your bottom up. That's how much you want to press down into your block. Great. Do the point with your feet. So press out through the base of your big toe joints. Roll your inner knees down, your inner heels down. Bend the elbows. Elbows behind you lift a little bit higher. Perfect. And then exhale to release. You can leave your block here again, remembering to move your sacrum in, grab your strap if you'd like, or take your arms out, leave your block where it is. So you, we remember to bring the sacrum in and up as we reach forward to grab the feet. You can also bring your strap around your feet. Really draw into your strap with both of your feet, but draw back into your hands. Lift your side body. It's an internal rotation. So roll your inner knees down, your inner thighs as you come forward. Tuck your outer hips in, guys. Your outer legs tuck in as you come forward. You can spread your elbows out so that you can keep your uh, back rib cage and front rib cage open. Great, 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 great. And then inhale, stretch up, lift up, and exhale to release. Perfect adjust the buttock flesh and we'll do that one more time. Now, when you do this, really rotate the lower buttock flesh out, but also draw back. You see how the foot, that's it, moved in. So the hip, uh, the upper leg bone moved into the hip socket. One more Paschimottanasana guys. Think about coming up and over your leg bone. So your hip points come up and you fold over, keep your front ribs, your abduct guys, don't fold like this. So to fold, keep your spine in, your sacrum in, come up and over your leg bones and then stretch with your arms. Grab your feet. Once you grab your feet, inhale, stretch up, shoulders down, shoulders down, press your feet into your hands, exhale your breath, widen your elbows so that your back ribs, your front ribs, your abdominals spread. 
Come forward, fold forward. And then inhale, stretch up, great. And exhale to release, perfect. I'm gonna do one more spinal twist before I come supine. So I'm gonna move my block to the side and I think I'll take my little blanket and sit at the edge of it so it's like this, right? And then I'll just sit right, okay, thank you, Jim. I'll just sit right on the edge of my blanket. And guys, I, I, I'm using one blanket folded small, but you may use more than one. You may want to use two blankets. The first thing I'm going to do is hold behind my right knee, bend the right knee up, bring the right foot onto the mat. And I want to kind of lean into that right foot and then pull that right shin bone back. Right, so have your, your right heel only a fifth distance away from your blanket and a fifth distance away from your inner leg. Hold your right knee or your right shin with your right hand. Take your left arm up and exhale, twist to the right. Bend in and hook the back of your left arm outside of your right thigh, right fingertips behind you. Good, hook as low as you can, hook as much of the arm. So Megan, lean a little bit forward and hook more of your arm. There you go, perfect. Press your outer right knee into your arm, your arm into your outer right knee, draw your outer right knee back, look to the right. And then exhale, release, come forward, switch sides. Extend the right leg out, bend the left. Press into the foot. You can hold this shin bone with the hand and never start a fold like this. So you want to um, spread the abdominals, spread the front ribs, spread the chest, right? Hold on to the left knee, right arm up, right next to the ear. Go ahead and twist and then lean in and hook the back of the right arm outside of the left leg. Take your time. Draw the outer left knee and twist. Bring the left fingertips behind the back. Look to the left. Good, now draw the outer leg into the arm, draw the outer left hip back and exhale, release, bring your gaze back. Perfect, to the center. Extend both of your legs out. I'm gonna separate my knees a little bit or my feet here and I'm gonna bend my right knee and put the top of my right foot on the mat, right shin bone, right knee all the way out to the right if I can get that. And go ahead and we've done this before. You want enough weight on this right foot and on this shin bone so that you may be able to do that. Right, so there's weight there. There's weight at this shin bone and at this foot. Now, bring the left leg in front, lift the side ribs, take a slight twist to the left, facing the left knee, reach down and grab your left foot one hand or two, good. You can use the right hand to the foot. You can also bring the left hand to the foot as well. Now exhale the breath and bend your elbows and fold here. Nose down to the left knee. This is Janusha Sasana. If you want, you can use those left fingertips outside of the hip on the mat or outside of the left leg on the mat. Push your weight over to the right. Twist a little bit more to your left and bring your nose to your knee. Really draw your right shin down, your right sit bone down. Now move the very top of your head towards your left foot. And then inhale, really stretch up, lift up. Good, and exhale, release. Janusha Sasana. Notice one thing in Janusha Sasana when you come here, notice where your hip points are going. They're moving out at an angle. Right, they're moving out to the right here at an angle. I want to really get both of my hip points to face that long knee. Do you get it? So maybe that's a kind of a, mm, a, a point, a, 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 what, a point of reference. So right hip point or hip point of the bent knee facing the straight knee like this. Okay, so let's switch sides. Janusha Satana. So extend the right leg out. And then go ahead and bend the left knee and bring the left foot up. Now, mm -hmm. 
Esther, if you can't do this one, you can modify by doing this, or you could just keep your legs straight, okay? Yeah, always support your outer bent knee if it's elevated. So if your outer knee is here, maybe the hips are really tight, always make sure to bring a, a support underneath the knee just to protect the knee joint, right? So you don't want the knee joint floating. So anyway, go ahead and bend your left knee, put the top of your left foot, left shin on, and then roll the inner left growing down. Now come forward and see if you can almost lift up on that left shin, left foot. And then once you come seated, the right leg is extended out. Now check where your left hip point is before we fold. So take your hand to your left hip point and see if you can move your left hip point slightly towards your right knee. Great. And then come forward, keep your left hand there. Keep drawing your left hip point towards your right knee. Grab your foot, one hand or two. You can use one hand. And then we wanna, again, pull the right, left hip point, right knee and fold. Keep moving that left hip point, guys, the left hip point. Take any rounding out of your spine. Bring your spine in. Move your navel up, move the tops of your shoulders away from your ears. And then inhale up, great. And exhale to release, perfect. Extend both of your legs out. Great, great, great. Go ahead and come off of your blanket and make a blanket roll. We'll, we'll come over a blanket roll for a little bit. So you don't need this blanket necessarily, but if you have it and you wanna keep it, great but you'll come off of your main blanket that you're seated on and roll it up. And this roll is just as thick as you need it, right? So maybe like for Leslie, you may wanna roll it smaller or if you think rolling it fully will be okay, do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll mine all the way up. Good, 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 good. And then you bring this blanket onto your mat and you're gonna lie over it, right? So I'll sit in front of the blanket with both of the knees bent and I'm gonna hold on to the mat and I wanna lift up and tuck my sacrum tailbone and connect my sacrum to the yoga mat like this, kind of draw back. And then I'll come down onto the elbows and try to roll up and over this blanket. I wanna bring the blanket roll to the bottom of the shoulder blade. Start with your blanket at the bottom of your shoulder blade. You wanna spread the backs of your arms. And then as you're here, you'll tuck your sacrum and your tailbone down to your blanket. Now, if this is still too much, if your blanket is too high, bring an additional blanket underneath your bottom. Otherwise, bring the bottom down. Keep the knees bent and together. Don't, don't straighten the knees, guys. Keep your knees bent. Keep your knees together. Once you get the backs of your arms down, you can move your knees. Just let them gently rock side to side. Good, not all the way over. And as the knees are moving, gently side to side, you wanna make sure that you're keeping the backs of your arms and your shoulder blades against the back. Bring your knees back to the center. Lift your bottom up and roll over your blanket a little bit deeper. Once you've rolled over your blanket a little bit deeper, then bring your bottom down. Make sure your bottom is grounded. So the backs of your upper arms, your shoulder blades are spread away from your spine. And then again, your knees can move side to side. Keep your knees and your feet together and work with your, your lower half from your hips down as one unit. So the knees move together. 
and can go over as far as you're comfortable. Keep your, make sure that the backs of your arms are grounded and as your knees gently move to the right, move your navel or twist your navel to the left. And then bring your knees back to the center. I'm not sure where your blanket is, but roll over your blanket a little bit deeper. And I think now it should be at the lower back at the lumbar spine, at the lumbar spine. So right above the waist. Once you get there, bring your bottom down, your tailbone down. And one way to really think about this guys is the buttock flesh from the top of the buttock to the lower edge of the buttock should be long. So the buttock flesh lengthens from the top. So even if you need to take your hands and draw the buttock flesh down, really ground the backs of your arms and your shoulders and draw your abdominal wall down. Let's take our arms out, palms up, and we'll straighten our knees here one at a time and see if we can get length here. So from the bottom to the heels, extend or stretch, lengthen the backside. And then bend the knees one at a time. A nice safe way to re-bend the knees is to drag the heels of the feet up so you can ground the feet. So not lifting the heels, but actually using the weight of your heels to bend your knees. Got the knees bent here, and I'm going to take the right knee out to the right. Let my left side do whatever it's going to do. Come to the outer right hip, outer right leg, outer right foot. Now, let your left knee go out to the left. Both of your knees are bent. This is Baddha Konasana. The arms can remain out to the side as the knees relax out to the side as well. See if you can feel maybe the spreading around the pubic bone, spreading between the two hip points and spreading around the sacrum. Bring the knees together and I'm gonna do what I did a moment ago. I'm gonna bring the right foot up first. Plant the right foot and then bring the left up. And then I'll take both of my hands to my blanket roll, walk my feet in close to my bottom, tuck my sacrum, lift my bottom slightly, and I'm going to push with my hands my blanket down so that it's right underneath the sacrum. So if you're like, well, where's the sacrum? Above the plumber's cleavage. Yep, that's where the sacrum is. And so when you when you get that blanket down, and, and you probably can't see me, but with your hands, um, use the weight of your tailbone and your sacrum, but with your hands, really lengthen the flesh. So as you're pushing on that blanket, it's drawing your pants, your muscles, your bones down towards your heels, yes. Draw your abdominal wall down. See if we can get some space there. So you can also bring your inner knees together and let your feet be a little wide. See again, if we can really get some space at the low back. And then go ahead and walk your feet in close to your blanket roll, lift your bottom up, push. And you really don't lift your bottom, let your bottom stay there, but push with your hands, your blanket down, come down very slowly. Keep that length that you've created at the sacrum. Bring your abdominals down as you let your sacrum and your bottom come back down to your mat. 
Now your blanket is down to the uh, lower buttock, upper uh, hamstring. You can hold your yoga mat to keep that length in your lower back. Straighten your knees one at a time. Oh, that feels good. And then let yourselves rest there just a moment. Your arms can be out to the side, palms up. Hopefully, guys, we feel that, that we've created some space in our low back. Tiffany, Megan, good. Now go ahead and bend your knees one at a time. And how I'm gonna do that again for the safety of the low back is to keep the abdominal wall down and drag one heel at a time and then place the foot on the mat. Yeah. And then while you're pressing in with your left foot, Bring your right knee into your chest. Press down into your mat with your left foot. Bring your right knee in. Keep your sacrum and your bottom grounded, guys. Don't roll your bottom up. Now bring your left knee up. Don't roll your bottom up. Keep your sacrum flat against your yoga mat. You can hug both of your knees. Keep your sacrum or down. Draw your outer hips towards your feet to pull your knees in. And then with an exhalation of the breath, go ahead and roll over to your right. Use your hands and push yourselves up to a seated position. Oh, that felt good. I forgot where I was. Again. <laughs> ah, very good, guys. Let's do Adho Mukha Varasana. Uh, modify any way that you need to. You may need a blanket between your heels and your bottom. So I'm going to come over onto the mat, sit it seated right on top of my heels. And there has to be this tucking in. So imagine having a strap here around your outer hips. So your outer legs and hips always tuck in, even if you're standing up. Your inner thighs always extend out and towards your knees, right? So keep yourselves here. Keep your sitting bones right underneath or over your heels. Come up and over. Come up and over. So there's length here. Sacrum tailbone down. Walk the arms out. Keep your bottom on your heels. Keep your shin bones pressing into your mat. You want to bring the tops of your feet down. Really stretch your arms out. Keep your elbows lifted. Keep your inner wrist or your wrist bones lifted. And then see if you can bring your chest towards your mat and your forehead down. Tuck your chin. As you exhale the breath, you can let your elbows bend and rest against the mat. Good, good, good. And then exhale, release, and come up. We're going to do that at the wall because I, I feel like we can get a little more length in, in this um, Virvandrasana or Adho Mukha Varasana. So blanket or no, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to come facing the wall with the two knees, and the knees are separated. And I'll bring the big toes together and then sit right on top of the heels again. Tuck those outer hips in. If the hips are tucked in, it kind of looks more like this. You see, so we want to tuck everything in. Bring your outer body in and your kneecaps touch the wall. Your kneecaps touch the wall. Watch for a moment. Adjust your buttock flesh. Really draw down here. Draw down here at your waist. Your sacrum tailbone is here. Bring this space down as if you're trying to nail into your yoga mat like this. And when you do that, then walk the arms up opposite. So again, you've got to have the sacrum and the tailbone going down in order to get that length and stretch in your spine. Once you get here, press your hands into the wall and bring your forehead to the wall. So do not arch your low back, guys. 
Do not arch your low back. Really bring your sacrum down. Really. Now, there's another way to think about this. Bring the bottom of your front rib cage down. Yeah, bottom of your front rib cage down. That's it. Now take the shoulder blades up. Take the fingertips up. Really keep pulling your belly button back towards your spine. Can you bring your navel back towards your spine and then up under your front ribs? That's it, Megan. Push the wall. Bring your forehead to the wall. Bring your chest to the wall. Not your abdominals. Just your upper back. Good. So concave your upper back. Perfect. And then exhale to release. Very, very good, guys. Very nice. You can go ahead and move back a little bit away from the wall. We'll stay on hands and knees and come to dog pose. So from here to here, and I'm going to keep the knees bent so I can get a lot of that length in my arms, my side ribs. And then I'll draw my sacrum tailbone down, straighten the knees. I think my back feels better, but I always say that. And then when I stop moving, it doesn't feel better. Okay, so take your time as you come up. Good, 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 good. Pull her hips all, oh, there you go, there you go, there you go. Now straighten your knees, guys. How do you do this? Bring your sacrum down. Bring your tailbone down. Now bring your heels down. Great, push with your hands, lift your fingertips, push with the heel of your hand. Yeah, that's it, you, Megan, push, lift your fingertips and push the heel of your hand like you're gonna push your mat into the wall. That's great, like that. Bring the calves down, guys, bring the heels down. See if your two big toes will reach the palms of your hands, don't move your feet. Just try to stretch your two big toes off of your feet. And then exhale, release, and come down, come down. Just rest a moment. Good. I'm going to do dog pose again, but I'm going to use a blanket here. And the reason, I don't know, I remember Jackie Nett's workshop. We used the blanket, but now I can't remember. Anyway. It's a long story, but we're going to come standing and have a blanket like this. But watch me first. Just watch me. So I'm not going to make too big of a blanket roll. I want to have a rather small blanket roll. But that, guys, is there, there's that little indention here, like at the lumbar spine. And while I'm using the blanket to see if I can spread here as well as between my hip points. So watch. So as I hold the blanket, small roll, I'll bring it to the hip points. Now to fold forward, I want to come up and over this blanket, really focusing, focusing, focusing on sitting bone spreading, posterior pelvis spreading, evenness in my feet. So I've got to still tuck those outer legs in, watch my inner thighs, spread the inner thighs out. So I am trying to create space. You want to spread between your hip points and we'll come folded. Maybe you grab the ankles or you can bring the hands to the mat. That's how we're going to start before we come into dog pose to come out. You hold your blanket and come up. Not dog pose yet. <laughs> oh, she's cute. Hi, Valentine. <laughs> Hi, Valentine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I'm distracted. Oh, Valentine, you little Valentine. Okay, all right. Blanket here, not a big roll. A big roll will kind of press into the abdominals and it won't feel very good. So a small blanket roll. Stand at the very back edge of your yoga mat and look down, make sure your inner feet are together. Hold your blanket, now inhale, lift up, lift the chest, exhale, come folded over your blanket. Now as you're folding, take your inner thighs out, tuck your outer hips in, come folded. 
Now, Leslie, if your back hurts too much where you can't really do that, maybe just hold on to your blanket and still try to fold over as much as you can. Good, good. Don't come forward yet, guys. Just fold up and over your blanket. Now, are your sitting bones moving away from one another? That's it. Take your sitting bones and spread them away from each other. Take your inner knees back, take your inner thighs back, and everyone shift into the front of your feet as well as the heels of your feet. Shift your weight forward. Now, how do you keep yourself grounded, you're asking? <laughs> it's you plant your center heel, and now I see if you can drag your yoga mat behind you with your outer feet. Very good, very good. Release your hands if you hadn't already done that and let your hands or your fingertips come to your mat. Let's keep our hips and our feet and our legs where they are and let's see how far out in front of us we can take our arms. Don't move your hips, don't move your feet, don't move your hips, don't move your feet. Come up and out of your waist. Come up and out of your waist. Lengthen your side body. Walk your fingertips out. Walk your fingertips out. Don't move your hips. Just walk your fingertips and your arms out. Press your thighs back. That's it, Tiffany. Lift. Everyone bring your breastbone up towards your chin. And then push your hips back. Push the hips. Great. Now walk the hands out until the palms are flat and you're in dog pose. Hold on to your blanket. Come to dog pose. Hold the blanket. Press the weight back. Elongate the spine. Make the spine very long. Lift the chest towards the chin. That's it, Tiffany. Now, bring your ears in line with your upper arms. And then walk your hands and your arms back. Come back to Uttanasana. Hold on to your blanket. And slowly come up. Ooh, that felt great mm -hmm. to me. I don't know about to anyone else. Okay, so throw your blankets away. Hi, Krista. Oh, hi, Sarah. Hi, Dan. Y'all weren't here when I, when I started. I opened my eyes and there you were. Okay, let's do, I'm gonna do Parsvo Tanasana. And that's the pyramid pose. So the pyramid pose, really where you're stretching in the pyramid pose is your outer leg. It's here, it's here. It's not just here, but it's all the way down your outer leg. So I'm gonna grab my block carefully. Okay, and I've just got my two blocks in my hands. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step my right leg forward and I want those right toes facing forward. And I'm gonna take my left leg back. My left toes are at about a 45 degree angle. But what I really need to do guys is connect my outer hips up to rotate the left hip forward. I'll draw the feet together and come forward. I'm coming forward very slowly because I wanna put that weight right there. So watch what I've got to do. Once I get the blocks here, I've got to really draw this hip back and shift forward. Once I shift forward, the back heel comes up slightly. I'll lower the blocks, bend the elbows and move the nose to the knee. I let the back heel come up, but to work even deeper, I can press down through that left heel and drag the right hip back. And then we'll come here. We'll try to squeeze the feet to come standing, okay? So start right leg. You can hold your blocks if you like. Start with your right leg in front. That's it. Now look back at your left leg. Step it out to the left and turn your left toes 45 angle. And then rotate your outer left side in towards your right knee. Yeah, turn the back hip forward. And then shift forward, come up and over that right leg bone, bring your blocks down. 
that's great, that's great, that's great. Keep, have your blocks out in front of you guys so you get length in your side body. That's wonderful, 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 wonderful. Now what I want everyone to do is I want you to press your outer right foot down and drag your yoga mat behind you with your outer right foot. Pull the mat backwards with your outer right foot. Draw it back, draw it all the way back behind you with your outer right foot. So your outer right foot here is drawing the mat behind you. Now with your back foot, your left foot, I want you to kind of pull the mat forward. Do this at the same time. Can you do this at the same time? Energetically drag your right foot back. Energetically drag your left foot forward. Your arms are out in front of you. Now, exhale your breath. Shift your weight over the top of your right leg. So you've got a lot of weight in all four corners of your right foot. Draw your outer right hip back. You can let your left heel lift up some. And then bend the elbows and fold, touch your nose to your knee, engage your legs. Can you hug your legs towards each other? Bring your feet towards each other. Don't move your leg, but draw your right foot back and your left foot up. And then inhale, look out in front, straighten the elbows, squeeze the feet or hug the feet towards each other to come up. Yeah, you'll balance if you can get that stability in your hip. The stability is here, right? So if the hips, the outer hips are not working together, then the stabilizing hips can't stabilize you. And then a pose like this becomes what? It becomes all about balance, right? It starts to become all about balance. So when you're here, remember that it, it looks interesting, really, but it's this action of hugging together, pulling in so that everything is centered and you're able to move forward. You control the hips by hugging those feet, hug the feet, hug the feet. Remember the Carmen Dreas, your legs and your feet are your Carmen Dreas, your organs of action. Okay. So go opposite. If you want to hold your blocks, you can. Or if they're already where you, where you want them, you can leave them there. But left foot in front, front, right leg behind. Now my outer right hip, I have to draw it in. Draw it in towards my inner left knee and then come forward. Come forward slowly because you're focusing on what is going on at your outer left hip and your outer left leg. Walk your blocks in front. Don't be in a big, big hurry to fold here. Make as much space at your spine as you can. Drag your outer left foot back and kind of energetically pull your right foot forward. Shift your weight forward, guys. Step onto that, all four corners of that left foot. So even if your right heel comes up, step forward. Stay forward. See if you can bring that right heel down, bend your elbows and fold. So if you can bend the elbows, fold, place your nose at your knee. You've got to energetically draw your left hip. That's great, guys. Draw your left hip back. Draw your left hip back. Drag the mat backwards. Now with your back foot, see if you can bring the mat forward, kind of draw your back foot forward. Great. Great, straighten the knees. Now, can you hug your feet towards each other? Just see if they can just energetically pull them together. Good, and then inhale, look out in front. And exhale, come up. Great, great, great. And you step your feet together. And then I'm gonna use the wall and we've all got one. Last time this helped my back adjust and oh, have this by heart. I don't know if it's gonna work this time, but I'm gonna try it. So um, Parita Arda Chandrasana, I'm gonna use the wall for one foot, right? So I've got one, my two blocks and you've got to measure this. So I'll fold forward and bring my blocks down like this, right? Just like a half fold. So in a half fold, watch, 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 watch. You don't want to lean all the way back into your feet, your heels, 
but rather you have to find that balance and that evenness between the front of your feet and the back of your feet. So where are the four corners of the feet? The four corners are gonna be the base of the big toe joint, the base of the pinky toe joint, your inner heel and your outer heel. Those four corners need to be very firm onto the mat. And once I get that, I'm going to step my left foot into the center and take my right leg, nope, do that opposite, right foot in the center, left leg back to the wall. And I wanna, don't go with me guys. So this left tip has to really roll down to the mat like that. And then I've got to make sure that this foot is underneath this hip. Once I get this, I wanna push down through the right foot, push back into the left foot, right, uh, left arm goes out, take the hand to the hip, draw the hip back, sacrum down, switch. Okay, and we'll face forward, back leg down and switch sides. Okay, so blocks within your hand. Got blocks in the hand. Good, right leg, right foot step center. Left leg goes back with your left foot on the wall. Now, when you bring your left foot to the wall, check, that your left toes extend or point down towards the floor, left toes. Turn your toes down a little bit more. Um, uh, excuse me, yeah. Do this first guys, left foot on the wall, left toes down, right leg, right knee straight. Now is your right leg right under your outer right hip? So Lisa, your right leg can hop back just a teeny bit. Dan, your right leg can hop back just a teeny bit. Now, everyone draw your outer right hip back. Bring your left hand out in front. Keep your block under your left hand. Take your right hand to your outer right hip and draw your outer right hip back towards your inner left foot. And then look to your right. Good. You could take your right hand to your sacrum. Press your sacrum down. Draw your sacrum back towards your heel. Twist. Twist. That's it, that's it, that's it. Open the chest and then look down and release. Great, great, great. Very good, guys. Very good. Go the other direction. So when you come folded, you'll bring your left leg into the center and your right leg steps back to the wall, your right foot. And then hands are out in front, arms are out in front. Draw that left hip back before you twist. You wanna draw your sacrum down, but elongate your spine, twist to the left. That's it, twist to the left. Good, good, good. And then exhale, look down and release. <laughs> Perfect. And then come standing. So I think maybe if we try that, I'm going to try um, a revolve triangle pose. I'm trying to see. I think I'm going to use the wall and do, uh, yeah, I'm going to use the wall. So you don't need your blocks, but I'm going to put both of my hands against the wall. And I'm gonna step, keep that right leg in the center or in front, step my left leg back and then make that adjustment. So it's almost like we're in Par's boat with our hands to the wall. And I wanna draw that right hip back, let the left arm release. I, wanna, I need to push with this right arm and draw the hip back. Huh? So both of your hands on the wall, face the wall, put your hands against the wall. <clears throat> step back, you can keep that right leg forward and really step back and let your left leg go behind you.
And then you've got to really push with your right arm and use your hands to draw your outer right hip back. Drag your outer right hip back. That's it. Your gaze is towards your mat. Now take an exhalation, release your left arm. Let your left arm move towards your right shin. That's great. That's great. Draw your right hip back. Look under your uh, right armpit. Pull your hip back at the same time and push the wall deeply. Great, look down, left hand to the wall, switch sides. Nice, guys. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, hands to the wall. This time, left leg stays in. Right leg goes back. Fold in half. Once you get this, draw your left hip back. Push with your left hand, release your right arm. Let your right arm be heavy. Push the wall, draw that left hip back. Look under your left armpit. Good, good, good. If I were there, guys, I'd really pull your outer left hip back so you feel length in your left side. Great, great, great. Perfect. And then release. Excelente. Excelente. One more wall thing and then I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna put my feet and legs out in front of me, bend the knees and adjust the buttocks. My sitting bones are to the wall. And then to straighten the knees, I'm gonna press the bottom, the sits bones up and start to let them roll over into the low back. And then I can just kind of hold on to the feet. You also wanna push. Push your yoga mat. So push your mat forward with your feet. Spread your sitting bones back of your waist and fold. Have your legs at a pretty good slant, little slant at further Tiffany, a little more. Bend the knees, take the sitting bones up and over and then push to straighten the knees. Good. Good, use those sitting bones to the wall. Grab the ankles or grab the shins. Kind of lift the flesh of your ankles up while your elbows and fold. That's it, the higher your bottom goes up, the better. Sitting bones up, sitting bones over. Go over into the low back, wonderful. Perfecto. And then we can exhale to release. You guys can look in front of you, maybe just bend your knees and come seated or move away from the wall and come seated. And you can sit on, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get down there on my mat. Um, you can use a blanket like we had before and you can use more than one. Let's do a couple of uh, seated pigeons. So the first one, I'm going to sit on the blanket. Seated pigeons. That's always fun. King, king pigeon. So I'm going to sit on the edge of this blanket. And we do this one all the time. And then I'm going to lean back onto my hands and pretend I'm going to do a boat pose, right? And I'm going to cross the right knee over the left and then carefully bring that outer right foot down, outer left foot down, and then lean forward and let those outer knees come down as well. You can reach in and grab your feet. You're going to turn the soles of your feet up. And then as I exhale, don't do this, but move the back body in, press the knee down into the bottom knee and come forward. And I've got to go very slow with this, but make sure that right knee is crossed over. The outer knee is in the inner left knee. Now, if that doesn't happen upon initial cross, lean over to your left and watch this right foot. Take it more to the left and then see if you can reground that right sit bone. This might work for my back. My hip points are still uneven, 
So I want to bring that right knee down, but also draw the right hip point back and then ground the bottom. You'll feel unevenness. If you're uneven, you'll feel it at the posterior pelvis. Guys, bring, bring your feet wide so they're, your shin bones are still where? Almost lined up with the top of your mat. Shin bones working to the top of your mat. Now reach down and grab one foot at a time. Turn the sole of the foot up and exhale, come forward. Draw your outer right knee back. Can you draw your outer right knee back? Energetically pull your right knee back. And then exhale, come up, come up. So guys, there's a difference in this, how the shin bones are more equal to the top of the mat than this. We're not here. This is not where we're going. We're, we're out. So you've got a lot of space, you see. So really, I'm just trying to get those hips to compact here. So draw the knee down, level the knee so that they're together. And then watch with the top knee as I'm bringing the knee down, I can still do this. Really pull that hip back. Okay. And then we'll switch sides. So lean back uncross, cross left over right, and then come down. Now, for some of you, maybe it's, you just have to sit. Maybe that's as far as you can get. Listen, don't let that top hip do this. So for your top hip, what you wanna do, once you get it here, L shape with your hand, draw down and lean over to the left. Bring the outer left knee down. You can come forward and grab your feet, turn the soles of your feet up. Draw your left hip back. You can even lift your sit bone up, left side to do that, and then come forward. So move your navel. Can you guys stretch your navel out? Towards your chest. Can you lift your chest, lift your breast bow? Draw your top knee down, bring your bottom knee up. And then exhale, release. Ah, come up. That felt good. Stretch your legs out. Megan's like, really? Is that so <laughs> real good, huh? <laughs> Adjust the flesh, cross the left over the right. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is all you can do, but listen, not like this, but see if you can cross that left shin bone, line it up at the top of the mat and bring the outer left knee down. And in a, kind of on a normal, just what it does naturally is it's moving forward. My leg bone, left leg bone is moving towards my knee. Watch, I want to tuck that leg bone in, in, draw it in, it goes in, it goes back. And then lean over to your left, grab your right uh, foot, right outer knee, and then bring that outer ankle bone over and place it. You place it in the inner left thigh, right above the knee. Don't go quickly. Now, L shape, lean over to your left, draw down with your L shape of your hand and then lean over and bring that outer right knee down. So listen, you can do this with one leg. So if you can't get both crossed over, do that. But your outer legs and your outer hips come back and then come up and over and see if you can Fold forward, begin, maybe you walk your arms out to the length. That's great, that's great. Guys, can you pull your belly button up towards your chest? A little bit deeper, go up with your navel. Go up towards your chest. Press down into your palms and push your outer knees and outer hips back. And then exhale, release, come up.
<laughs> Lisa, I couldn't tell if you were yawning or if you were like, like pain, but this verified pain. Okay, got it. All right, so go to the other side. So right leg. Now what you're thinking, well, I can only do one leg and that's okay. If you can only do this, it's beneficial why you ask, because look, you can even come forward just using that one leg. So it's not completely, absolutely, you have to do both legs, right? It serves you better if you do maybe even like this, one at a time, as opposed to this, right? So bring the right leg down and then draw the right hip back the right sitting bone and then bring the left over now can we get used to like lifting this uh left leg up and maybe supporting the outer knee and the outer foot like this yeah support the outer knee and the outer foot and see how high up you can lift that foot yeah there you go megan pull your right your left foot to the right a little more yep and then place the outer left ankle bone on the inner part of the right knee. Keep holding your foot, your left foot, right hand. Draw your left hip back and then bring your hip down, bring your sitting bone down, bring your knee down. You can hold your upper legs, you can now shake, draw down. Now come forward, go slowly. One arm out at a time in front. Don't go quickly, but lift your navel towards your chest. Bring your spine into your body. And come forward. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Move the navel up and towards the chest. Move the spine in. Once you get the arms out here, push with your hands like you're going to push your yoga mat forward and press your hips backward. Yeah. And then come up. Perfect. And then let's uncross. You could stay on top of that blanket. Move the buttock flesh. I'm right at the edge and I'm gonna come forward and grab my heels and fold. So just a Paschimottanasana before we get to our back bends. Don't round your spine, keep your backs of your legs open, backs of your knees spreading, shoulders away from your ears. And then inhale, lengthen up, and exhale, release. Very, very good, guys. And I'm going to move my blanket to the side. And I think I'm going to do, um, I'm not going to do um, Setu Banda today, but I am going to do uh, uh, Ustrasana, camel pose. So have whatever props you need. I'm going to use a strap. And we've done it like this recently. In camel pose, you've got to make sure you have an internal rotation. So I'm going to use one block after I say you only need your strap. And then your strap just kind of goes underneath the front of your feet. Like this. And I've got this block just to make sure that I'm giving an internal rotation. And I'll lift up on the strap and lean back. Oh, y'all get my idea. That's the idea I had, but I can't do it. So bring the strap under the ankles, flatten the feet, come to kneeling, make sure you've got internal rotation, and then walk your hands down the strap as you lift your chest. Good. That's it, Lisa. Can you take your hands down a little further? Perfect. So once you come up, you walk your hands down the strap. 
Lift your chest up, good. And your head can reach back or lean back if possible. That's it, Leslie. Good, 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 good. And then let's exhale to release, perfect. Just come seated. And I don't know, there's, uh, we can do that one again. You can do that one again, again, just like that. Or let's see if I can go from Varasana. Because this way you get that opportunity to really press and tuck your sacrum and your tailbone. And it also keeps that length all the way up, okay? So you can repeat what we just did, or you can attempt to sit in Varasana, fingers face forward, and you just kind of lean back on your hands, and then you lift and tuck. And each time you lift and tuck, you walk your hands a little bit closer to your heels. And so you can press your weight all the way up. Good. Keep tucking the sacrum. Tuck. Tuck, bring the hands to the heels and then lean back. Perfect. Perfect. And then exhale, release. Very good, guys. So since I'm here, I'm going to bring the big toes together and just come over into a relaxing child's pose so the elbows can bend and the forehead can come down. And that's just to release the back from our back bend. That's good, Krista. Perfect. And then you guys can go ahead and come up nice and slow if you've released your back. Perfect. Let's go for our inversion. So it can be headstand, handstand, legs up the wall, or if you're menstruating, you shouldn't invert. So you can come standing for maybe um, Uttanasana or Prasarita Pada. So this is a variation. If you're not going to actually invert today, uh, you would just kind of come forward and fold. If you are going to invert, pick your inversion, shirsasana or even halasana. So if you have enough blankets, halasana will work as well. So if you're going to do halasana or shoulder stand, you would need two blankets on top of one another. Um, if you're going to do headstand, make sure you interlace your fingers facing you. Legs up the wall is just to turn and put your legs up the wall. There you go. Or do y'all want to try something else or is this good? It's good. What about you, Megan? Is this good? Okay. So with legs up the wall, you want to try to get your bottom to touch. That's perfect. Your arms go out to the side. So if you have additional props, you could just kind of scoot them away. Yeah. And this is a very nice, relaxing pose. Legs up the wall. If you're in headstand, make sure you interlace your fingers so your fingers face you. I probably like where she go. Where did Joan go? Maybe Joan will come back and take her. <laughs> ah, very good, guys. If you're in legs up the wall, go ahead and stay in legs up the wall. If you're in headstand, you can go ahead and come down. And when you come down, release your neck by standing and just folding and letting the sides and the back of your neck relax. And if you're releasing your neck from headstand, your arms are also very heavy and the backs of your hands can rest on the mat.
Good, 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 good. Ah. Once you're done with your um, inversion and you've released your neck, go ahead and come seated to your mat. Now, those of you in legs up the wall, you can bend the knees and kind of push the feet into the wall. Yeah, maybe y'all could just grab those. There you go. And then you'll pull your knees into your chest, hug the knees and roll over to the right and come up. Perfect. And we'll go for Sutta Padangustasana. So for me today, I'm going to use a blanket underneath the back of my head, one block and one strap. So the blanket is like it is on the shelf. That's just the back of my head. My shoulders are going to line up with the edge of the blanket. One block to the right on the flat side. Now, we always have a way to recline. And this is only so that we can protect things like the lower back. So when you're coming supine on your mat, always do it this way. Bend your knees, feet on the mat, hold your mat, lift and tuck, and then recline. Do you see how we're keeping that length here? You see? So when you come reclined, you don't ever want to come reclined like this. So there is control even in the way that you descend to the mat. That's on the walk. Is that all right? So take your time and get your blanket adjusted underneath the back of your head. Hold your yoga mat with your hands. Roll your upper arms back and down to your mat. Push with your feet, lift your bottom and tuck. Tuck your sacrum and then connect your lower back to your mat and then draw your weight back. So push your mat away from you with your hands. And then your block goes right outside of your right hip. We need your Let's straighten both of our knees one at a time. Push your feet into your wall and bring your lower back flat. So you're no space between your mat and your lower back. Grab your strap with your hands, bend your right knee, bend your right knee up and place your strap around. Let's do it around the base of our toes yeah. and then straighten your right knee. Let's keep the right leg lifted up for a moment. Straight kneecap. Draw down on your strap as much as you can and make your right buttock flesh as long as your left. So can you get the same length there? And you're asking, well, how do I do that? You bring your right thigh bone back. Bring it away from you. Bring it towards the wall. And then reach up and grab your strap with your right hand. Turn your right toes to the right. Turn your right kneecap to the right. Take your right leg out to the right. Go up and over your block, which is right outside of your right hip. So your right femur bone should be against your block. Let's focus on that left lot leg. Left side should be grounded. Really pull your outer right hip in. In. Take your outer right hip and tuck it in towards your outer left hip. And then bring your right leg up. Take the strap with your left hand, take your right leg over to the left. Go very slowly guys, because you have to compact your hips, compact your hips. So one way to do this is pigeon toe your left toes, turn them in, turn them in and then let your right leg go over. You can L shape your right hand, draw your right hip down buttock flesh on your right buttock is very long and then bring your leg back. Hold your strap with two hands, lift your head and shoulders, pull your nose to your knee. Press your thigh bone away from you though. Femur bone goes back towards your left foot and then release, release your strap. 
straighten your right knee, hold here for a moment while you move your block over to your outer left hip, but hold here for a moment. Make sure that you've regrounded so that there's no space at the lower back. Make sure you're flat against your mat. And then bend your left knee, press your right foot into the wall. Take your strap, let's bring it around the base of our left toes, extend your left leg up. Now imagine having a sandbag or take say a 50 pound weight on the very top of your right leg. That's where the weight goes. Guys, hold your strap with one hand. Take your right hand to the very top of your right leg bone and just kind of press it down. Almost iron the top of that leg towards your foot. You feel? So that bone grounds. So if you can bring that right leg bone to your mat. There you go. Like you're going to push your mat away. Now, hold your strap with your two hands again. And can everyone move their left femur bone, their left thigh bone back? towards the right foot. That's it, straighten the knee. That's it, that's it, oh, great. Now adjust the foot, this makes a difference. Can you guys press up through the base of your left toe joint as if you're pressing the gas pedal? Press. Maybe now point your left toes, see if that will straighten the knee or open up the front of the leg. There you go. Now, floint the foot. Make sure that that left thigh bone goes away from you. You can even L-shape with your left hand to bring your left femur bone back. Yep. Again, think, think about a lot of weight, not just in your leg, but really when you think of that, how that foot works. Push my foot. Can you feel? And now reach up and grab your strap with your left hand. Slowly turn your left toes left, your left knee left, and then that outer left hip rolls down. That's great. Keep that. Hold with one hand, great. Take your left leg out to the left. The work here is really on you extending to that inner left leg, but bringing that right outer hip, take an exhalation, down. Good. Good. Reach through your inner leg. Reach and press through your foot, guys. Make your foot very active. Press like you're pressing the gas pedal. Good. Now go ahead and bring your left leg up very slowly and take your left leg to the right. Go slowly though. Now you can L-shape. Let's L-shape that hand, left hand, and draw the outer left hip away from you. Good, breathe, breathe, breathe. Even pigeon toe on your right toes. You bring this thigh bone back to the back. That's it. There you go. Good. And then let's bring that um, left leg back to the center. Hold your strap with two hands. Lift your head and shoulders. Bring your nose to your left knee. You've got to straighten that left leg. Make the butt flesh long. That's it. Make the butt flesh reach towards the bottom foot. Great, and exhale, release. That was wonderful, guys. Really, really good, really wonderful. Go ahead and bend your knees. You can move your block. If you had a block there to your left, move it over out of your way and bend both of your knees up. Take your arms out. Let's take our knees over to the left and look to the right. Ah. Now there still has to be length in the buttock flesh here. You see, we're twisted, 
but we're still trying to get the right buttock flesh and the left to match. So you can lift your left shoulder blade up and really take it to the left and then twist, take your gaze to the right, look towards your right hand and your left hand can draw your right knee down. And then come back to the center. Take your knees over to the right. Let them come all the way down to the yoga mat. Adjust the shoulder blades, right one up and out to the right. Now the belly button and the side left rib cage rotates towards the mat. You're drawing that knee down, left knee down. And twist. And then we'll come back here to the center. We hadn't done this one in a long time, but I'm going to bring the knees up. It's another spinal twist. And I'll take my knees to the left. And again, I'll look to the right. Twist to the right. So let the left shoulder blade come up and move out to the left. And then I'm going to straighten my knees with my legs moving to the left. So once they come over and they bend, let them rest here for a moment, bend, and then see if you can straighten one knee at a time, keep the legs moving out to the left. Now see, again, you can take that one hand and draw that outer right hip down. Twist to the right. Now bend your knees, see if you can bring them together to bend them. Oh, no. And then bring them up. Feet can stay on the mat. And then let your knees go over to the right. Go very slowly, guys, twisting the navel to the left as you move the knees to the right. Stack the knees, adjust the shoulder blades. Straighten the knees. It could be one at a time or both. Just let the legs stay out to the right. Roll the right hip down or roll the left hip down. Look to the left. And then bend your knees. Let them rest there for a moment. Bent. And then bring yourselves back to the center. I'm going to take one last one and then we'll take Shavasana right a outer ankle over the top of the left knee. Draw your femur bones away from you. Bring your belly button towards your mat. Go ahead and bring your left foot up. You can interlace behind the left leg. Bend the right elbow, bring it into the inner right thigh. Now pull your legs in. Not your, don't lift your bottom. Actually draw your bottom opposite of your feet. Draw your bottom opposite of your right foot. And then release, bring your left foot down, release your inner lace, right foot down, switch. So start here and the leg bones go down. So maybe you cannot go any further than this here. You can go deeper, keep your leg bones back, lift your right foot and inner lace and then bend the elbows out. And then pull the left foot in, but you really want to press your outer left foot into your right leg. And then pull your legs in. Ah, and then exhale, release. Shavasana. Prepare yourselves for Shavasana any way that you want. And so... Uh, you can keep that blanket under the back of your head if you'd like. You could extend your knees and put your feet against the wall. You could go back to legs up the wall if you want. Um, but Shavasana is the corpse pose. And it's our last pose. And it's the resting pose. So make sure that you're comfortable um, for about a four-minute Shavasana. Three, two minutes. One minute, just kidding. <laughs> so 
supposed to be the longer of the poses. So you two grab that sandbag and just put it right on the top of both of your leg bones. Yeah, like that. Yeah. And then your arms, your palms go up and your arms can go out to the side. Yeah, and then you close your eyes and you relax. So in corpse pose or Shavasana, we're trying to move everything inward. Um, Shavasana, you can think of Shavasana as a deep sleep. You know, in, in a deep sleep, you're, you're, everything's kind of tucked in. Your senses are still there. They're just not as active. So for Shavasana, we want to see if we can quieten the senses or tuck them in. So if the eyes were to see, they would see within. If the ears needed to hear, they would hear within. The skin even tucked in. Relax the breath and then relax every muscle, relax every bone and relax every organ in your body. Let your abdominals, your abdominal organs relax. So the organs that are in the abdominal area, just as you exhale, let go. The brain should move towards the yoga mat, the heart should also move back and down towards the mat. to the room. When you're ready, small movements in the fingers and in the toes. And as you exhale the breath, bend your elbows, bring your hands to your belly or your heart. Take your arms up and over your head. Take a full body stretch. Bring your abdominal wall towards your mat. Release your arms with an exhalation of your breath. And very slowly bend your knees. And you can do this by bringing your heels to the mat until your soles of your feet come down. We can bring the knees into the heart and wrap the arms around the knees in any movements here, side to side or front to back. 
deepen your breath. And then as you exhale, you can roll over to your right and hold there in a fetal position. And then bring yourselves up seated here very slowly, any seated position that you would like. So your hands can come heart center, third eye, or just resting at the top of the legs. Take a moment again in silence to honor the true self. The head is the most important in the body, family, organization, and nation. The responsibility of the head of the nation is immense. A wrong head, a wrong leader, and the nation. The neighbor and the world suffers. The head of an organization is selected with a lot of thought, keeping in mind strict criteria and ability. A head can lead the organization to happy employees as well as profits and not so good. Head can destroy the organization. So also with the family and finally the head of your own body. If something goes wrong with the head, then the entire body suffers. The mind, too, gets disrupted. Even in our practice, the positioning of the head in the asana is crucial. Thank you guys so very, very, very much. Namaste.